Thank you very much. Good evening, Liverpool. Monday night, having a drink. Good on you. Yeah. Um, I read somewhere, apparently, if you drink a bottle of wine every night, uh, you're probably married. <laughs> uh, that's a little fact for you to start with. Um, I'm, uh, I'm drinking the water tonight. Uh, water. To be enjoyed responsibly, obviously, water. Don't drink too much of this shit, you'll drown. <laughs> that's a fact. Apparently, if you drink eight litres of water in a, in a day, you can drown in your own body. Do you know that? Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Saved a few lives tonight, yeah. You don't want that at your funeral, do you? Hey, do you hear about Phil? He, he died, he drowned. What, in the sea? No, in his own body. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> Doesn't come with a warning sign, though, does it, water? It needs one. Co coffee hasn't got a warning sign, has it? Coffee needs one. I don't know whether you're aware of this. It's a big coffee problem in our country. People are drinking far too much coffee. They're drinking so much coffee, they're getting themselves into debt. Yeah. They're losing their jobs, their houses, their families. You walk around the city centres like Liverpool, you can see these coffee addicts everywhere. <laughs> Sitting on the pavement, holding up empty coffee cups. <laughs> Looking for the next fix, it's really sad. <laughs> Espresso. Do you know the kind of guy I am? Whenever I come to major city centres like Liverpool, I always carry flasks of coffee with me and pour it into their cups. <laughs> yeah, I'm a giver. <laughs> this is the world we're living in now. We live in a world where nuts come with a warning sign, may contain nuts. <laughs> yeah, guess why? They're nuts. <laughs> or even more sinister, may contain traces of nuts. Oh, yeah. Scary times we're living in. Uh, we're not saying there are nuts in there. We're just saying there might be. Watch out for nuts. When did nuts start killing us? Nuts used to be our friends, didn't they? We used to live together in nut human harmony. When I was a kid, we used to rub nuts into our eyes. Not those kinds of nuts. We <laughs> I didn't go to private school. No, we didn't. We didn't have those kind of opportunities. <laughs> no, we used to have big barrels full of nuts. We used to scoop. Oh, I love rubber nuts into my eyes. Don't you? I'm mad for it. Yeah. We used to inject nuts into our veins. Nobody died. Now everyone's allergic to nuts and everything else. We've got all these allergies now that suddenly people are allergic to. You know, we're going to be at some really pathetic funerals in a few years' time, aren't we? You know, people used to die for a reason, didn't they? You went to an old school funeral a couple of years ago, you'd be standing there, so how did she die? Oh, wrestling bears. <laughs> Shit, that's serious. <laughs> Our generations, we're going to be standing there at funerals in a few years' time. How did she die? Oh, she drank some milk. <laughs> mm. Turned out she was lactose intolerant. <laughs> There was no warning sign on the bottle. <laughs> Apparently the family's suing milk. <laughs> Who owns milk? <laughs> well, we took it from the cows. We're not 100% sure it was consensual. <laughs> Fuck it, we're suing cows, they're going down. I bought a tin of tuna recently, that might be simple, wouldn't you? A tin of tuna said on the lid of this tuna, this dolphin friendly tuna was caught off the Maldives by a man, a rod, and a line. I'm like, yeah. Well done, is it tuna? That's all I wanted to know. I could have just put tuna in big letters, I'd have been happy. Why do I need to know that information? I'm never going to meet that man to be able to thank him. What are the odds of me meeting the actual man off the tin, walking up to him going, you're the actual man off the tin? Thanks for catching that fish, it was lovely, that sandwich. How are the Maldives? <laughs> Do you remember when you bought a chicken a couple of years ago? We were quite content it was a chicken. Why? Because that's all it said on the label. Chicken! 
You took it home, you cooked it, you ate it, it ended there. Now all of a sudden, because we're information junkies, we all want to know everything about everything. We all want to know the chicken's life story before we eat it, don't we? To make us feel better about ourselves. Is it woodland? Is it corn fed? Is it free range? You'll buy a chicken, it'll say in the label, this chicken was hand reared on a farm in Devon. It had a happy life amongst its friends and family. Until the day it was lovingly strangled by a farmer called Tom. Sagittarius. Chickens call heaven Nando's. <laughs> I just have this image in my head of a little chicken going, where do we go when we die? We go to Nando's. <laughs> it's really nice they're right here. They've got a loyalty scheme. <laughs> if you're really bad, KFC, they put you in a bucket. <gasps> I want to go to Nando's. <laughs> Dear. So we need warning signs on things. Like uh, recently, I did some shows down in London. Went down on the mega bus. I don't know whether you've been on the mega bus. He's not that mega. <laughs> Lying to us with a title. He's barely a bus. I've been in some pretty shitty situations over the years, but that 200-mile journey from Preston, near where I live, to London, probably the most horrific 18 hours of my life. <laughs> After we'd picked up the entire cast of Can't Pay, we'll take it away. <laughs> We eventually hit the M1. Remember, it's hurtling along at 30 miles an hour. One stage, we passed a lorry load of pigs. And as we passed the pigs, one of the pigs looked at me. And we shared a moment. For those brief few seconds in time, I could almost read his little piggy mind. He said, I'm a pig. I'm on my way to the abattoir. They're gonna kill me, they're gonna put me up on a meat hook, a butcher's gonna chop me up into little pieces, then sell me to people who are gonna cook me and eat me. But hey, at least I'm not you. <laughs> You're on the mega bus, sort your life out. <laughs> but it was a quid each way, so I think I win, you know. <laughs> I'm always looking at ways to save money, because money's scarce. I mean, I'm a parent, that's expensive. If you haven't got kids, start saving now. That little financial parasites, they'll bleed you dry. I've got a daughter, right, a young daughter. Took her to Disney in Florida a couple of years ago. Anyone been to Disney in Florida? A few of you. If you haven't been, I'll quickly explain just to save you 17,000 pounds. <laughs> Basically, Disney in Florida is hundreds of tired, angry parents dragging the tired, angry kids around in 98 degrees of heat, queuing for hours for a ride that's gonna last 12 seconds. What could possibly go wrong? It's just domestic violence happening all around you. Mummy, I'm tired. Shut up! We didn't remortgage the house so we could listen to you whining all day, you selfish little shit. <laughs> Stop crying. There's Mickey. Get in the fucking queue. I love you. Hot water, it's been a pleasure. I've been Phil Walker. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you.